Hello, hello, friends. It is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool, and I'm here to show you the brand new Ice and Snow Little Learner um, Science Unit today. So it has been released, so if you own the Little Learner Science Bundle, download it again for your update, or if you own the curriculum, download the document again, and you will see it there. So I'm gonna show you the unit in action, then I'll flip the camera around and answer any questions you have. But go ahead and tell me in the comments, if you do an ice and snow um, unit with winter, or um, if you're a kinder teacher, do you um, do the gas, liquid, solid, kind of the states of matter science unit? Or maybe you've never done an ice and snow science unit before. So let me know in the comments what you guys are up to and to help us get um, to know each other. So just like all of my science units, this one was a little bit trickier because um, kids can't really touch snowflakes. So. I wanted them still to be um, examining snowflakes. So I found these fabulous real photographs of snowflakes and it's a basically a scientific inquiry skill. So they're gonna be using the magnifying glass and they're gonna be picking snowflake cards and they're gonna be trying to find the one that matches. So they can use the magnifying glass and they can look at them and examine them and see, oh, look at that one. <laughs> that one matches that one. And there's a large, medium, and, oops, let me grab the small one for you so you can see it. And there are small ones. So you pick out the ones that you think um, would work for your kiddos. And um, because maybe if you have toddlers, like obviously that would be too small. But if you have pre-K or preschool, they could probably do the tiny ones just fine. But here are kind of the snowflakes, and these are real photographs of snowflakes. And every snowflake is unique and different. There are no two snowflakes that are alike. That's kind of one of the hands-on science tables, so they can use the magnifying glass and match the snowflakes, or they can use the counting cubes and measure the snowflakes. So they would just use the counting cubes and measure to see how big it is, and they can measure the different sides. And I don't know if you know this about snowflakes. I'll share with you. There's a fun fact page, because some of these things um, I thought would be fun for teachers to kind of know. Um, for this unit, but all snowflakes have six sides. They're like a hexagonal shape. Um, every snowflake is different and they're all symmetrical. So it's a great way to sneak in some math. So talking about shapes, talking about symmetry, and lots of um, science and math and inquiry skills kind of all together in this unit. So this is one of the science table setups you can do. And as always, it comes with journal pages and covers and fabulous real photographs. Um, vocabulary cards and I know some of my kinder friends have to do states of matter so I thought this would be a great unit to do states of matter with because um, water changes from a liquid to a solid to a gas so if you are a kinder teacher and you have to do states of matter this is kind of a perfect unit for you to do that with and I found this fabulous book on Amazon it's called the story of snow um, it's the science of winter's wonder and it's by Mark and John, but it's fabulous. It's got real photographs. The text is simple um, and it's just amazing um, and I really like it. So I included a list of extra read alouds um, and it does include the all about ice and snow read aloud in the unit, but if you want more nonfiction text about ice and snow. I do have um, about four books I found that are awesome for little learners. So let me show you some of the other science table setups. So like I just said, the um, snowflakes all have symmetry and they're six sided. So I did a build a snowflake kind of stem challenge. So you get like a, um, like a base um, and it's basically a, um, a hexagon with a line through the middle. And they're basically making shapes with pattern blocks. And I included printable um, pattern blocks. That way if you don't have any in your classroom, you can use those. And if you wanna make them blue, so they're like a snowflake like I did, you can do that. And um, this template does fit real pattern blocks. So you can totally use real pattern blocks with this. If you have a light table, you can use your light table pattern blocks and just print this on regular paper and it'll kind of shine through. Um, so this is another um, another investigation you can have at the science table. You can also make snow dough, because we all know 
it doesn't ever snow or maybe in your area it doesn't snow when you are learning about snow um so this is it doesn't look like anything but it is just like snow you guys look it makes snowballs and then it crumples up just like snow and i included a visual recipe so you guys can make it with your class and you can either use baby oil and it smells amazing and feels so soft but if your kiddos if you have any kiddos that eat things um use vegetable oil that way if they do put it in their mouth it's not going to hurt their tummy it won't taste good but at least it won't hurt their tummy um so yeah so that's why i just put oil so that way you can pick kind of the one you want to do but it is fabulous you guys and that way they can feel the snow, um, talk about how it clumps together, kind of like the texture and the properties. Even though it's not real snow, it's very, very similar. And I'm getting it all over the recipe card, but that's okay because it's laminated. <laughs> and then you can also do a Watch Me Melt Snowman Experience um, investigation. So you can see my snowman <laughs> melted. Um, but basically, here's what he looked like. And I know, it. like I said, it doesn't snow everywhere. Um, so you can make an ice snowman. So I included directions. So it's basically, I put three water balloons um, in the freezer and I froze them. And then when they're frozen, you just um, peel off the water balloon or peel off the balloon. And then you make a snowman. And then I use felt um, for the pieces. And they, they do stick to the ice. And then throughout the day, you measure him. And I just use my rainbow ruler. And I'll put a link on how you make one. But basically, I just color a ruler. And each inch is a different color. So they're using a real ruler and they're counting inches. But they're really, for them, they're just counting the color cubes. So they can count how big he is. And then you record it how um, when you start it. And then record their observations. And then I just took a picture with my phone and put it up there. But you can also draw it. And then later, four hours later, he melted a little bit and we measured him again, talked about what he looked like. And then at the very end, um, you can see he wasn't all the way melted, um, but there was just, you know, the bottom part of his body left and he was only too tall. And we, um, you can talk about like what he looks like and you can talk about how the pieces are falling off and things like that. So it's a great way to use those, up to, um, help them learn how to use their observational skills and compare you know what the results are and just a really fun snowman melting experience and it works if you if it doesn't snow in your area or if it's not snowing and then another fun experiment and this one um you are trying to melt the ice so i filled up some yogurt containers with ice or with water and froze them and then one tray they're trying to melt the ice with salt so i just have a cup of salt a cup of water and you can see it's melted and you can see there's a lot of like crevices in it and then this one they're trying to melt the ice with sugar and you can see it doesn't melt as well but it still kind of gets in there and this one it, you can either have trying to melt it with water so that way they can compare and contrast how different things affect water and it's great for um cause and effect if i put salt on the on the ice it will melt more if i don't if i just use water it's not going to um things like that so it's, you could also put this um investigation up at your science table and there are recording pages with this investigation and with with the watch me melt so if you have our kinder teacher and want those um, recording pages those are there for you and then they always ask, how is a snowflake made? And it's kind of a complicated process, but I'm, I simplified it. So basically, it's just the water droplets freeze in the cloud around some dust. And then an ice crystal forms, again, in that hexagon shape. And then those grow bigger, and they clump together. And as they bump around on each other, and it grows out. And then once it's formed they keep bumping into each other and getting bigger and bigger and then they're so heavy they fall to the ground as snow so it's kind of a super simple breakdown of how a snowflake is made so you can do it as an anchor chart there's a one page chart or you can make it interactive and they can put it in order and again a recording page so that's really fun and then here are some of the other um read alouds and i always you guys, I always make sure and I purchase them, the books that I recommend to you guys because I would never recommend a book that I haven't had in my hand. 
Um, so like here's the book that's included, just printed smaller. And then this one, I do love these Let's Read Science books. Most of them anyway. Some of them are kind of weird. But <laughs> um, so yeah, so Snow is Falling, Winter Wonderland. And then I included this one. It's all about matter. It's a super simple book for my kinder teachers who have to teach solids and liquids and gases. But it's super simple. It talks about melting, how it changes, um, and the shapes. And then, as always, a parent letter. And then I also included some other fun investigations. Like this is the, the one that I think all of us do. Um, but you can definitely do the, like the polar ice rescue so they can put... So um, use the water droppers and try and melt the ice. Um, like what melts the ice experiment, they might tell you they want some salt to try and melt it quicker. My little guy, when he was um, doing this last night, he said, well, we, let's put a heater on it or let's get the hair dryer out and let's melt the ice. So it just um, gets some great conversation about how ice melts and how it changes. So, and then I'll show you one more thing. And there's just a couple other ones like painting ice um, and different things. And if it does snow, I do have some act, some ideas for you guys. Um, it does snow and you're lucky <laughs> and what you can do in your classroom. And then as always, this is the packet and it has lots of real photos um, in it of it in action. So that way when you're going to do the unit, um, you don't have to, you know, rack your brain. It's all right there for you um, and you're ready to go. And like, here's one of the recording pages for the Watch Me Melt Science Experiment. All right, well, you guys have an amazing day. And if you have any questions, pop them in or ask in the group. And I, if you um, do this unit and want to share it in the Facebook group, Pocket of Preschool Facebook group, I love to see it in action and it inspires other teachers as well. So you guys have a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.